Hello there team. This quick video today is going to talk about how to create users using the security manager and uh, how to have the log changes made by the user. So here I have an example. I got a four inch screen here and I've got a customer that uh, wants to run the machine in the auto mode and, and do things in the auto mode and so forth, uh, control things. But they want to have where uh, the person converts to manual mode, they have to log in to convert it to manual mode and then make changes to log whoever does that in the manual mode. So let me go ahead and show you what we've got going on here. In the Crimson database, uh, I have a, uh, if I go over to the left hand side, go to data tags, I have quite simply team some internal tags. That's all these are right here. I think I spelled the word toggle wrong, but anyway. Uh, so. Um, I do have one tag here at the top called auto underscore manual. And this guy, auto manual, back here at the display page, this toggle button right here, when I double click on this guy, I'm simply using that tag right here. Of course, the way to do that is to just drag this tag over into this field here, and that's going to control the uh, this button. But here's the, the dilemma or the, the challenge. The end user would like to have such that only a certain operator could convert it to manual mode and have that person log in, if you will. So what I've done here in this database is down here in security, I have created two users. One with the name Ty here. Really? Hold on here. We've got security going crazy here. So I have two operators, one called Ty and the other one here, John. Uh, notice here, this is the username right here, but this is the real name for this person, Ty Webb. I like that. And his password is actually ABC. And then John, his password is 123. Now, if you notice here, this probably isn't important, but what is important is both of these operators have a checkbox on user rights one for custom rights. So if I go back to data tags on the left, click on this tag called auto manual. The only one I want to be able to change this is people with user rights R1. So in this case, if I go right here to security, hit the edit button, I'm going to say that only users with specific rights, check the user right one, will be able to access that button. And also, I would like to log who changed that, basically the user and the program. So right here, I've turned on log changes by users and programs as well. So that's part of what's going to log the data also on here. The other thing that the customer wanted is anytime it goes back to auto mode, he would like it to log off the user so they have to re-log in every time. So if I go back to data tags, you're going to notice here that on the tag for auto manual, the triggers tab, I actually made a trigger here that says active off. Remember, these are triggers, so they have to transition. So it's going to go from on to off, and, in, and when it goes off, I am calling a function called user log off. And where I find that is in the lower left hand corner or lower right hand corner. Go to system, expand the functions tree, and then if you go down to the security category, there's a function here called user log off. And all I did to use this is I simply dragged this function right here, and that's what did it. If I wanted to use another one. I could do that one, but I'm actually going to use this guy. So it's going to log off right there. Okay. One more thing here that I wanted to do here is um, over here on the security tab, if I click on security right here, I want to also uh, log the changes by the users. So I will turn that on here as well. And I'll go ahead and create it down here, enable logging here as well, which will create an events directory or a security event uh, directory, I should say, on my card that will show this. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out, team. I'm going to go ahead and go to the web browser. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work here. There we are. So here's the web browser. Again, I'm just turning on and off things here. Uh, if I click the manual button, watch what happens. I got the font really big because it's on a 4-inch. So if I click here, I can type in Ty, and then I can put in his password, I believe is ABC. And if you look now, team, I've clicked to manual mode. It says down here, by the way, I've, I've put on the real name so you can see it. 
And at this juncture, these buttons now show up because the auto manual is in the on position. So I'm making changes to these right now. Now, if I click back to the auto mode here, you'll see that it automatically logged off who was over here. And again, if I just make changes here, no big deal. But let's say that maybe John wants to log in. So this time I can click here and take it back to manual. I'll click here. This time I'm going to log in John. And his password, I believe, was 123. There you go. And now John's in here. And now he can make changes on this side. These buttons only show up when the operator is logged in. So here's John making these changes. Again, you can see his name down here is John Doe. And if we log him out, it goes back to here, and we can make changes here. So this is what happens on the interface. If I go back here to the main screen, hit the back arrow, and here I can click on a category called View Logs. So if I click on View Logs, there's a data logger I set up. It's not doing anything exciting. But there's this one here called Security. If I click on this, if you look at these little timestamps here, if I click on the most recent one we're playing with, if you look here, uh, well, this is the, nobody's logged in. Let me go back. Let me click on this one here. And you can see here, team, that it actually logs who was changing those and when. So you can see here's the tie and the John Doe that was changing it from what to what. I'm actually logging that. Now, this view that you see here is because of my browser continually will show it like that. If I right click on this and simply save the link to my desktop in this case, and for some reason, uh, Chrome keeps converting this to a text file. I'm going to convert it back to a CSV. Once I convert it to a CSV and save it like that, I can now click on it here and uh, we can open it up in a spreadsheet application. Here, as you'll see, and then this should show better the columns. So if I make this full screen, you can see I got a date, the timestamp, and what tag it was, and we can see where it went from to and who made the changes on this application. So this is pretty neat because it actually logs it on the SD card in the actual HMI itself. So uh, in the recap, you need to set up your users here, give them certain rights, click on the security tab. You'll want to uh, do some logging changes here and enable, well, this is actually uh, just in the log file, but you'll want to enable the logging control here and then go to the data tags and depending on which one you're using, use the security tab and make sure that you turn on this here if you want to log those changes. So that's a quick way to use Security Manager to uh, uh, log who changes what. In this case, I'm going from auto mode to manual and that allows these buttons to show up and so forth. Anyway, just a quick little video on how to do that. If you're interested in this database, send me an email and I'll share it with you. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.